Dear students, in this module, we'll take a look at the Martinez algorithm. As you know, we are looking at the family of algorithms that can be used to determine the secondary structure of the RNA molecules. Martinez algorithm is just one of them. For predicting the secondary structures in the RNA molecules, you have to create all the possible combinations of the complementary nucleotide couplings and therefore arrive at the optimal structure. There can be so many possibilities that it is difficult for an algorithm to compute this problem quickly. As a result, it takes a lot of time and people are trying to optimize the process. As you know, Zucker's algorithm was used to compute the secondary structure. In Zucker's algorithm, what we did was we looked at the positive energies that was given by the unpaired nucleotides and the negative energies that were given out as a result of the coupling of complementary nucleotides. This created a lot of combinations and the problem became difficult to solve. Martinez algorithm is an optimization for Zucker's algorithm. So as I just mentioned, making all the possible combinations for the nucleotide for the complementary nucleotides is a time consuming problem. So therefore, we need to optimize this. Martinez algorithm tries to do that exactly. The philosophy of Martinez algorithm is simply that if more energy is given out as a result of formation of a secondary structure, let's say the hairpin loop, then we favor such structures. However, if there is a smaller hairpin and lesser energy is given out, we do not favor that structure as much. So in this way, the secondary structures that give out the most energy are favored, while those that are not giving out that much energy are less favored. In this way, we design the problem in the favor of the, uh, these structures that give out more energy. Okay, so to begin with, as you know, we can take the RNA sequence, right? And we can extract all the possible two prime regions. Once we have done that, then we can try to see how, how much energy is given out as a result of the formation of each region. Once you have calculated the energy that is given out by each subregion within the RNA sequence, Two prime structure, then you can calculate weights and assign them to each region which is directly proportional to the energy given out due to the formation of that region. Now what you have to do is to select a random set of these secondary uh, two prime regions and make combinations. So this is typically, typically called the Monte Carlo method. So one thing that you must note here is that those secondary structures that were favored as a result of their property that they gave out more energy and were hence more stable will be favored in this selection process. Next, you fold the RNA molecule by making combinations of these favored RNA secondary structures. And then you see if you have found some structure that is more stable than any other structure that you had made previously. If it is so, it is the optimal structure. However, if that is not the case, then you keep making more combinations from the random set of regions. It is important to remember that these regions are actually weighed by their energy that is given out during their formation. So if a structure is giving out more energy, then we select that secondary structure more than that structure which gives out less energy. Please remember this point as it is very important. Of course, until we find the optimal solution, we keep going in this cycle, we keep making different combinations of the secondary structures and this can go 
for as many combinations as are possible. Okay, so since each secondary structure is weighed by the energy that it gives out, therefore it is more probable. The probability of selecting that structure increases. So in this way, the probability of selecting all such secondary structures that are more stable is high. You must note that Monte Carlo method does not give you a definitive solution. All it does is it may keeps making those combinations until you arrive at the optimal structure. Of course, if the RNA sequence is small, then you can uh, have a definitive solution, but typically that is not the case.